Hello friends, let's start uh, today's chapter, thermodynamics, with, uh, with some recapitula uh, recapitulation of some previous uh, very basic uh, concepts, like a system. So, uh, as we all know, anything that is under observation, any system is, is that part of the universe which is under observation. For example, if you have, if, if you have this coffee cup, then if, 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 if your experiment or your observation is just bound or just limited by this, uh, what is happening inside this coffee cup, if that's your observation. So this becomes your system. And everything other than this in the entire universe becomes your surrounding, okay? So you can also assume uh, another system in which the coffee cup and this room becomes, and everything in this room becomes a part of a system. So you study every um, energy and work and heat exchanges that are going on and everything that is going on inside this, you're studying that as a system. So this room along with all its things inside it becomes a part of the system. And everything in this universe outside this becomes a surrounding, okay? So it's a, it's a pretty uh, simple concept which means that anything in, in that, uh, that is under consideration in this universe, anything that is under consideration is the system and everything else in the universe becomes your surrounding, okay? Pretty uh, simple concept. Now, there can be different types of systems. Uh, the open system is one which is a system in which you have both the transfer of matter and energy. So you have th th that system which allows um, the, the exchange of matter, like matter can come in. So you have, say you have a coffee cup, you can get milk and sugar and things coming in, you can do that. And it is dissipating heat outside, right? So that system becomes an, becomes an open system. So which allowing the exchange of both matter and energy. So that is an open system. In the, on the extreme opposite, any system which is not allowing the exchange of like neither uh, matter nor energy is like closed, is like an isolated system, right? So it is not allowing the exchange of anything, matter or energy, so that becomes an isolated system. What happens in between them is a closed system. Now a closed system is such that there is no matter exchanging between the system and the surrounding, but there is an energy exchange between. So that kind of a system is called a closed system. So we, we know these uh, simple concepts just as a recapitulation. Now, another uh, simple concept is uh, the different kinds of systems. So you can have a homogeneous system or a heterogeneous system. Now, a homogeneous system is the one which has only one phase in it. Now, for a discussion of phase, uh, you can go back to the studies of the matter when matter was discussed in class. There was, a, we, we explained what, what's the concept of a phase, right? Now, if you have, say, uh, coffee in this, uh, or liquid water in this cup, so the liquid water itself is one phase. Now, if there is nothing else in this system, or, and it only contains liquid water, that means it has only one phase, thus making it a homogeneous system. Now, on the contrary, if you have a system which has ice and water, then it will become a heterogeneous phase in which it has two phases. So anything that has two or more phases becomes a heterogeneous system with only one phase, it's a homogeneous system, right? Okay, the next concept, concept is a state. So the properties of the system as designated by the pressure, temperature, volume, number of molecules, okay, number of moles, or number of molecules inside the system, and things like that, but that defines that, that, that system is a state. So properties of the system are termed as a state. Now, the equation that ties in, that, that, that explains the relationship between these different states are called the equation of state, okay? So, pressure, volume of, pressure of the, pressure of the system, volume of the system, uh, number of moles, and T, they're connected by this equation, which is called the equation of the state. So, these are all states, and this is the equation. This is also uh, very famously known as the uh, perfect, uh, the ideal gas law equation. We'll be dealing with this shortly. What's an ideal gas equation? How did it form the ideal gas equation, right? So where did this R come from? And what is this R? No, so the R is a universal gas constant. We will, we will understand that why is this a universal gas constant? Because PV divided by number of moles, which is N and T, forms a unique number designated by this universal gas constant, which is 8.314 joule per Kelvin per mole. 
okay so we will we will learn about that so what is n n is a number of moles okay so the the equation that ties in all the states is called the state of uh, the state uh, the, the equation of the state okay moving on we have different kinds of variables in here so any variable that depends on the size or the quantity of the whole system the quantity of matter that is in it is called an extensive variable for example uh, the mass of the system or the volume of the system which is actually dependent on how much what is the quantity of, of, of the matter that we have inside so that kind of variable is called an extensive variable which is dependent on the external factors like the mass the, the quantity right so volume is one of them kinetic energy of the system because the number of more molecules you have uh, in the system you have more kinetic energy right so kinetic energy and any kind of energy will be dependent on the type will be dependent on the size and the quantity of the matter so those kind of variables are called extensive variables on the opposite we have intensive variables now what's an intensive variable those variables which do not depend on the the quantity or size of the system for example the temperature of the, uh, of the system is an intensive uh, variable viscosity um, of, of the material so if you have one gallon of water versus 10 gallons of water you, the viscosity will remain the same right the refractive index of water will remain the same so these kind of properties that do not depend upon the amount or the quantity of the of the of the matter inside it is called an intensive variable okay now it's an important concept state variable that those kind of variables which do not depend on the path it takes to change from one state to another is called a state variable so we, we, we can uh, study this by using this uh, small diagram in which you have on the x-axis have plotted pressure the y-axis have plotted volume so you are standing changing from plot uh, from point a to point b right and for point a we know the pressure and the volume and point for point b we know the pressure and the volume right so you're changing from point a to point b now what is the change in pressure now the change in pressure is designated as delta p right delta is the change what is change pressure final minus the pressure initial now this change in pressure for all the different steps for all the different paths like path one is the straight line path two is this stepwise uh, uh, like path path three is this uh, uh, sinusoidal kind of like path and path four is this, uh, this this curve so if the change in pressure is the same when you move from A to B and it does not depend on the path then pressure will be a state variable now you see like we know the pressure of this of this of, of this point point A state right let's assume this was 10 liters right uh, sorry the volume uh, is 10 liters right and for for point B let's assume the volume was 5 liters so what's the change it's 5 minus 10 which is minus 5 right so volume is minus 5 liters now this volume change will be the same for all of these same goes for pressure since the change in volume or the change in pressure did not depend on the path it took the, these two variables become state variables they are path independent they do not depend on the path this uh, it takes to reach from state a to state b right so these variables are called state variables what is the opposite of state variables path variables those which depend on the path it takes so we'll see in, in, in subsequent uh, uh, lectures that heat and work are not state variables, they are path dependent variables or path dependent variables, right? Path functions, they are not state functions or state variables, they are path functions. Okay, another very important concept is the concept of temperature. We usually understand how to measure temperature, but we often forget what does temperature actually mean now temperature is just the average kinetic energy of the system expressed in a in a particular way okay 
So the average kinetic energy of the system is expressed by a variable known as temperature. Now, in kinetic theory of gases, we have studied that temperature is two-thirds K, which is the kinetic energy average, times one by the Boltzmann constant. Now, what's, what is the Boltzmann constant? Boltzmann constant is the R by Na. R is a universal gas constant we just saw here. And Na is the Avogadro's number, right? It's the number of moles, like 6.022, So we will study the, the Avogadro number in detail. You must have studied already in mole concept. So Boltzmann constant is R by Na. So when we use Boltzmann constant in K, we get this temperature. So we have to understand what temperature exactly means. It is just the average kinetic energy of the atoms or the molecules. Okay?